hey there, it's Tim from Top Music and yes, I'm in front of a little bit of a different kind of piano instrument today. In fact, this isn't a piano, obviously, this is an organ. It's actually a pipe organ and uh, in today's video, I want to give anyone who's a pianist or a piano teacher and who is asked to play one of these things some tips on what to do because this is like jumping into the cockpit of an aeroplane if you're not familiar with how to actually work this. So let me take you through some of the things that you need to know. Um, firstly, when you get to an organ and you need to play it, you need to work out how to turn it on. And that can be a little bit of a challenge. So find out before you actually have to play it, how to actually turn it on. This one um, has a key to turn it on and a lot of them are locked with keys. So just check you've got the key before you um, make a start. Now the next thing is you need to make a sound uh, and the sooner the better because you may have been thrown in and just need to make a sound. So if you just try and play any of the keyboards without touching anything else, you're not gonna get any sound at all. So we need to actually tell the instrument what sound to play. And that's what these things are called uh, are for. These are called stops and each stop opens up a rank of pipes according to a sound. So uh, if you wanted to get a trumpet sound, I could pull on uh, one that says trumpet, like this one here. Uh, you could get flutes, you can get all sorts of different styles of sounds that will uh, be appropriate for whatever it is that you want to play. Now, before you can work out which one of these buttons to pull, you need to know about these keyboards. So on an organ, this whole thing is called a console, and these are called manuals. And there's there can be two, uh, one even, two or three or four or five. Sometimes there's even more manuals. And generally the one in the middle is called the grate. The top one is called the swell and the bottom one is called the choir. Uh, and that's, that's a general convention. They do change a little bit. The grate tends to be the one with the biggest range, loudest, strongest sounds and, and great for finishing pieces of music. The swell is an interesting one. Um, so let me turn on uh, just a couple of swell uh, swell stops. So the thing about the swell is that it can uh, be changed in volume using the pedal down below. So this uh, is effectively a volume control uh, lever. So now there's no other way to change the volume of a pipe organ except to choose quieter stops unless you're using the swell. And so the swell manual allows you to change the volume using the foot pedal. And what that does is actually all of the pipes for the swell are inside a big box with louvers on it, and the pedal actually opens and closes the louvers on the box, so that gives you the sound. So the swell's great to play if you're a little bit timid and want to have that control over volume. So I've got the swell, we've got the grate, uh, and if we choose some sounds on the grate, let's uh, get some... The grate has a very big, strong, full sound. Generally, the choir uh, is, it tends to be a, a smaller kind of instrument. So it's great for playing along accompanying a choir uh, or for more quiet kind of music or an interlude for example. And then of course you've got the thing which terrifies most pianists about the organ, which is down here, the pedal board. So if you have a look on the uh, other screen, you can see you've got a rank of pedals down here. To make these uh, make sound, you use the pedal stops. So if I turn on some uh, nice big pedals uh, stops, we can hear Generally speaking, if you're not a trained organist, you're not going to have time to learn how to use the pedals. So in the next video, I'm going to give you some tips as to how you can make it seem like you're using the pedals and playing them even when you're not. So that's coming up. Okay, so we've got a few other buttons to, uh, to go over as well. So you can see all these uh, buttons underneath the keyboards here. And what these are are memory stops that the organ builder or a, a previous organist has put in. So the ones under the swell will change automatically the swell stops. And so an organist who's used to a particular organ will know that, oh yeah, number seven's really great for uh, when people are having communion and they need a nice quiet sound. 
or in this case not, it's more like a trumpet sound. Um, if we go to number one, that's your quieter sound. So this allows, uh, effectively allows some programming of the organ, but again, if you're new to it, you're thrown into could you just please play for this service quickly? You're not gonna be able to work out what all of those ones do. But that's just for future reference. Um, you've got the same for the grate under here. So if I click uh, maybe seven. And then again, the same for the choir. Now, there's one other really important button that you must know, and that's the button down here. This one says Gen Can. G E N G E N C A N. I'm not sure you can just see it. That stands for General Cancel. And all that does is turn off all your stops and puts everything back to neutral. It's like putting the car into neutral or putting on the park brake. And as a general courtesy to future organ users, that's something that organists will always do. Just hit that button, clears all the stops so that the instrument's ready to be played next time. Just as you've got these stops here under the uh, manuals to change sounds, you've also got the same down here with your pedal board. So these buttons here allow a dexterous organist to be able to change the sounds that they're playing uh, on um, the, well in this case, the left side changes the swell, which is this keyboard up here, and this one changes the sound of the pedals. So the best advice I can give if you are thrown into making a sound and playing an organ for the first time, if you've never done it before, it, regardless of whether it's electronic or, uh, as in the case of this one, a full pipe organ, is try and get there uh, with half an hour or an hour, it's just so you can get your bearings and work out what all the buttons and things do. Because it really is a bit overwhelming when you first sit in front of one of these things. So I hope that's been helpful just to get you started. In the next video, I'm gonna go through some techniques about playing that are very different to piano versus organ. Uh, and also some of those tricks about what to do if you're not so keen on, or you can't quite use the pedals. And look, I had piano organ lessons when I was about uh, 11, I think it was, I started. I don't even, I couldn't even reach the pedals back in those days, but I distinctly remember the lessons. This instrument looked like it was the size of, I don't know, the Eiffel Tower or something to me. I loved, I've always loved the sound of an organ. I think it is the most majestic, unbelievably warm, rich, and powerful instrument. Uh, but I will, you know, always remember from those days uh, that there are so many different techniques. If you can play the piano, you can certainly make sounds, but it won't necessarily sound that good. So check out the next video and I'll go through some of those techniques which are actually different between the organ and the piano. Let me know if you've got any questions and leave a comment below, thanks. If you enjoyed today's video, then please make sure you click to subscribe. And if you're a music teacher looking for help with any aspect of your teaching studio or business, then make sure you check out topmusicpro.com for all our membership details.